So what is cancer? This is an important question we must answer, especially since many people don't fully understand it. The most basic definition of cancer is that it is unregulated, uncontrolled growth of cells. Now we're all familiar with the fact that cancer cells can grow to the point of causing a tumor. But what causes cancer to form in the first place? Well, we first need to recognize that cancer cells were once normal, healthy cells. It's only after repeated damage to healthy cells that they are transformed into cancer cells. In the year 2000, a landmark research paper by doctors Hanahan and Weinberg was published in the journal Cell. Now, this paper was titled The Hallmarks of Cancer, and it defined key characteristics that distinguish cancer cells from normal healthy cells. In total, they identified six hallmarks of cancer. The first hallmark of cancer is that it has what is known as a replicative immortality. Now that's a big word to say that it continues to grow forever unless we do something to stop it. And this is in contrast to normal cells in the body, which have a predetermined lifespan. Another hallmark of cancer is that it resists apoptosis. Apoptosis is programmed cell death. Our cells are designed to undergo apoptosis once they are at the end of their life and they're no longer working as well as they're supposed to. But cancer cells do not do this, which is one reason why they are immortal unless we kill them. Now, cancer cells are able to sustain unregulated growth for several reasons, which brings us to additional hallmarks of cancer. One of these hallmarks is that they're insensitive to signals to stop their cell division. So normal cells can only divide so fast, but cancer cells can continue to divide quickly without restriction. You can think of cell division as a cell making two identical copies of itself. And you can imagine that with enough division, cancer cells can multiply quickly in the body. Another hallmark of cancer is that it can create its own growth signals. In other words, cancer can stimulate its own growth. And this is in contrast to healthy cells, which must rely only on external factors to stimulate their growth. Now yet another hallmark of cancer is that it activates what is known as invasion and metastasis. Healthy cells don't do this, and they can't do this. Uh, they can't go to locations where they're not supposed to be, basically. But cancer cells can, and this is why cancer is known to metastasize or spread to other parts of the body and cause problems. The last of the six hallmarks of cancer is that it induces a process known as angiogenesis. This is the formation of new blood vessels, and these blood vessels can be used by cancer uh, to feed itself uh, fuel and other nutrients. Now, in the years since the hallmarks of cancer were first defined, two additional hallmarks have been added. The first of these is a reprogramming of energy metabolism, which basically means that cancer is able to use various sources of energy and use them more efficiently in order to fuel its growth and spread. The second new hallmark is that cancer is able to evade the immune system. This means that cancer can cloak itself so that the immune system doesn't view it as foreign and try to kill it. So now we have a total of eight hallmarks which define cancer and distinguish it from normal, healthy cells. In addition to these hallmarks, we also have what are known as enabling characteristics which can help cancer continue to flourish. There are two of them. The first enabling characteristic is known as genomic instability. And you can think of this as promoting damage to genes. We know that these DNA mutations can change the function and behavior of healthy cells and promote their transformation into cancer cells. The second enabling characteristic is an upregulation of inflammation. Inflammation can be thought of as an irritation of cells as well as the environment around cells. Cancer can use this inflammation to grow and spread. So understanding cancer in this detailed fashion is necessary in order to properly treat it. And I can tell you that mainstream cancer treatments such as chemotherapy, radiation therapy, immunotherapy and surgery certainly address some of these hallmarks, but they don't address all of them. And this is why I believe that integrative oncology is so important. In integrative oncology, we don't abandon conventional cancer treatments. We embrace them. However, we also embrace outside the box treatments, provided that they have a sound scientific basis for their use, they're safe, and are also compatible with other treatments we're using. And this gives us the luxury of choosing from a wide variety of potential therapies for each patient, which can then be tailored to each patient and his or her unique situation. We must stop approaching cancer patients using cookbook medicine where every patient 
with specific cancer diagnosis gets pretty much the same treatment. So I hope this video has been helpful and it's given you a better understanding of what cancer is as well as how we can improve the way we treat it. This is necessary if we want to actually start decreasing the number of people dying from cancer. Thank you.